lot of teams in desperation over the years. Uh, you or wherever you've been, but what do you what kind of what do you expect from them in terms of that desperation point of view in Game Three? Uh, I just think they'll come out um, with the crowd behind them, with uh, even more energy than they started the series with. Uh, I think uh, all their guys are going to be ready to play and knowing that this is a huge game. What are some keys to countering that? Uh, just match, you know, I keep playing with a you know, high level of uh, intensity and energy, um, but mix that in with a lot of uh, smarts and, and high IQ plays, and, and you know, we should, uh, that should turn out for a great game. So, you know, it's going to be a, one of those nights where both teams are going to want it so bad, and it's going to be a back and forth game, but, you know, we got to uh, be ready to play for 48 minutes. Like the what are showing up the way you guys are making the best basketball plays? Yeah, I feel like we can definitely be better in some situations, but um, for the most part, uh, you can't be perfect in a basketball game. Uh, but um, I like that we're striving towards it. You know, while watching yeah. film, while you know going over sets and practice, we try to try to reach perfection, and uh, I think that's only going to make us better. Would you think they're talked about a lot today? Was the effort y'all play with? Where does that come from? The leadership experience. How do you guys play with that drive every single game? I just think that's uh, part of our identity, since uh, especially since I've been here. You know, obviously, when Coach Curry got here, you know, just the length that we have on the defensive side of the ball, switching, that takes a lot of uh, energy and effort to do. Um, and also, how we move the ball in the offensive end takes a lot of smarts and energy. So, um, you know, we got to be on point if we want to be the best version of ourselves out there every night. And um, you know, we definitely be better in that department. Kevin, you're, you're aware of what Monty Williams endured in Oklahoma City. Uh, he got hired by the Suns today. Yeah. Um, how cool is it to see that where he's back to now? Yeah, um, you know, spent some time with Monty, um, like you said, no KC, and just got to know the type of man he was, he is, and you know, uh, his coaching style <clears throat> is what it is um, because you know the stuff that he's been through as a person and how he looks at life in general, and it helps him. Um, as a leader and a teacher, and I'm excited that he's back in, into coaching and walking that sidelines again. So, um, you know, Phoenix, uh, their whole organization got a, a great leader to step in and kind of take him to the next level. Kevin, Chris, Chris Paul has really? said that you know how aggressive he plays anyway, but he says a key for them is he's got to be more aggressive. What's the message you hear that coming from all their star players that he's not playing as aggressive as he wants to be? Um, I, I think for Chris, he always is aggressive when he steps on the court. It may not be the score. I think, I think that probably is the message around that is that they want him to score a little bit more. But I think he's always been an aggressive player. You never, he's never going through the motions out there. So we expect him to be more aggressive to put the ball into the basket. But um, I mean, we also expect him to be that same tenacious defender, passer, just dis dis disruptor out there. Um, so we got to also be be ready for him if he's trying to trying to get put numbers on the board as well. Hey Kevin, what do you think makes Monty a good leader? Well, you know, he knows how to talk to people for one. He knows how to communicate, and he's honest. You know, and it's something uh, that's lacking in uh, our world in general is just truth. You know what I mean? So especially when you're talking on the basketball court with a young group of guys, they're only going to get better. And, um, you know, when he, got his, he has a young core that is looking, that is hungry to get better and is hungry to have some success, and he knows what it's all about, especially reaching the mountain top of San Antonio and, you know, coaching some great players along the way. Um, he knows exactly the formula to, you know, to get better every single day. Kevin, how much of uh, – you're playing so well right now. Locked in is what Steve Kerr said, the best he's seen you play. How much of that has to do with after so much attention that was paid to off-court topics during the season, now all of the attention is just on the games, is, is on the competition? Uh, what, what's, what, uh, what, you, what other people pay attention to really uh, is, not my, is out of my control. Um, it was only about what I want to focus on. Uh, I'm not playing as well as I want to play as far as shooting the basketball. I think uh, other parts of the game, um, I'm just playing as hard as I can, but I definitely would love to shoot the ball better. Uh, but uh, I feel like I had some great stretches over my career. I feel like I've, you know, didn't score a lot of points, but I felt like I put together some great games, you know. So I, it's not really what other people say or how they feel about what, how I'm playing. It's really about how I feel at the moment. There's no disrespect to anybody who has an opinion on me, or, or you know. But I don't think that doesn't sway you know my thoughts as a player when I step out on the court, whether it's to work out or play a game. But is there something to be said for how in the playoffs it seems that this is a time when there's more focus from the best players on the games because well everybody else around the NBA is just focusing on the competition. Yeah, I mean I feel like. Um, 
Uh, I feel like it's, you guys should probably start focusing on that um, in October. I think that would probably help. So it won't be much of a shock to you once this time of the year comes around. Um, but it's so much, it's so hard to focus on basketball for six months straight, you know, as a player, as a analyst, as a beat writer, as a fan, you know. But certain people do that. And uh, I feel like a lot of players have that focus and mindset the second uh, training camp starts. But a lot of people are late. And it looks like you're one of those guys that's just caught up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kevin, what leaves you? Kevin. What do you expect uh, them to do to try to get more production from Cabela? Uh, I think they are definitely going to continue to have him slip out of screens and slip to the basket and use his athleticism more. And we got to be aware of him roaming, uh, especially for offensive rebounds. Hey, Kevin, what leaves you unsatisfied with your shot, even with how productive you've been? Uh, it just hasn't been going in. I feel like. Um, you know, I have some shots that definitely uh, felt good leaving my hands, but obviously they have to finish by going through the net. So um, I got to definitely uh, keep working and, you know, keep being aggressive. In your mind, should Chris Paul be considered one of the top handful of point guards of all time? Yeah, for and, sure. And what, do you, what have you thought about what he's been able to do this, at this stage of his career? Uh, my, my view of success is more so longevity than it is just uh, awards that you accumulate over your time. Uh, I think Chris Paul has been in the league for 14 years now, and he still um, affects the game the same way he did at the beginning of his career. So that longevity turns you into a, a, a Hall of Fame or a legend, in my opinion. Uh, how difficult is it uh, to navigate the, the deny of the switches at the top of the key when James is calling for the screen and you got Iggy or uh, you or Steph trying to just play cat and mouse to prevent that from happening? The switches? Yeah, how difficult is that to do when you have James? Oh, yeah, he's uh, he's deceptively uh, quick. Um, he uses changes pace um, and speeds, really, at the, at the elite level, um, probably is in the history of the game, I think, as far as slowing down, lower you to sleep, and then, you know, speeding up. So he uses that in the pick and roll. He uses that in isolation situations. And I think that uh, throws defenders off when he's, you know, probing, probing, doing boom, then he bursts to the rim or, you know, st stops on the dime and shoots a, a pull-up three. So we have to be aware um, every second that he has the ball and be focused and be ready to, you know, uh, to guard him. It's unstoppable. He's an unstoppable player, but you can definitely make it tough on him. Hey, Kevin, with shutting down on the turnovers in game two and being on the winning end of shot attempts, what's the key in carrying that into game three? Um, well, we just got to be smart. Uh, you know, we want to be aggressive, but we got to pick and choose our spots well. And, you know, obviously this team is uh, at the tops of the league at creating a little chaos for you on the offensive side. But we got to be patient and, you know, hopefully we, uh, we get a good shot up every time down. Kevin, Steve was saying that the urgency to start this series was better, and he thought it was in large part just because of the respect you guys have for this team. Do you think it's that simple uh, as far as how things started now compared to how they started to the Clippers series? Uh, we respected the Clippers for sure. Um, don't put, definitely don't want to put it that way. But we respect this team. You know, I, it's just because we played them before. You know, we went seven games with them. So that, but that level of respect uh, and that level of knowledge about this team goes to another level when we play them. So, yeah, we're more locked in because we know this team can beat us. James Harden and Chris like to isolate a ton, but how would you describe their on-court relationship and just how they make the game easier for each other? Uh, I just feel like they play off of each other well. I mean, when one guy has it going, the other guy is, um, you know, off in the weeds just waiting and waiting for his opportunity to come in. And He's just waiting for the other guy, you know, when the other guy needs a breather. And I feel like that's a, they have a perfect balance between the two. And I think not just them, but Mike D'Antoni, you can tell they have a huge, a nice relationship and that's built over time about, you know, especially on where they want the ball and what, it, what rotations and players they want them around them. So they're probably just constant communication between everybody in the organization, which, uh, which breeds success. Kevin, James Harden said that the thing he admires about you is how hard you work, and that when he arrived at OKC, that it's actually one of the things he learned from you was like how important it was to get in the gym. When you hear him say that, that that's something he admires about you, how do you think it? I uh, just, you know, uh, appreciate all of the, um, you know, the love your peers show you, you know, especially guys that you came up with and was grinding since kids with, basically, you know, knowing James since we were young. 
we were in the gym together. You know, we all both had the same love for the game. You know, so I learned a lot from him, um, how he approached the game, and I try to just be the best version of me every day to set an example. I mean, he was a couple years behind me, and I felt like I was in the league a little longer than him. So. I want to kind of set a good example about not just telling him what to do, but just, you know, how I worked and hopefully he pulled a couple things from me. So, but I probably pulled way more stuff out of his game than he got from me. So it was an even trade off in my opinion. Is Andre Last question. playing even better than, you know, maybe the first year you got here? I mean, it seems like he's you know, maybe at a higher level. No, I wouldn't say he's at a higher level or, I mean, um, at a certain point in Andre's career, I feel like he mastered who he is as a player. And I think it's um, that first championship here in 2015. You can just tell um, just from watching him that um, this is how he's going to play. So I, th I think it's just a matter of whenever a coach needs to put him in a game in different situations, he's going to be ready to you know, adapt. And um, he's been that way his whole career, a guy that you can pretty much plug into any spot, he'll succeed.